Hey guys, day three vacuum testing. Today we've got um, a Prolux, that's the first one we'll test. We've got the Metrovac, and then another one called the Recar, which is like a su super high end, kind of like weird, fancy one that's not super easy to find, but it looked intriguing. So I figured we'd test that one too. But anyway, um, we're testing um, the performance of a bunch of different vacuums, um, the, the suction, um, the flow, and then also how loud they are and how much amperage they draw. So we're just going to get right into it. So Prolux is super popular on Amazon. So this is where we purchased it from. We get a $10 gift card. Look at that. Well, oh. yeah, it's fancy. With the piece of paper. <laughs> It's a big piece of paper. In addition to the um, testing the performance of it, we're also going to be rating the uh, accessories, hoses, things like that. If you haven't checked out the previous episode, I would highly recommend that. We also did the first episode explaining how we're testing, where we're giving these numbers. Additionally, you can find all these numbers in the uh, spreadsheet we're going to release um, that has basically everything. So you can look at the numbers and make your own decision on which vacuum you're going to get. Right off the bat. This hose is terrible. This is similar, I think it was to the Bissell. Super stiff, not flexible at all. I've got some accessories. Floor attachment. So this unit is a little bigger than ours, it appears, in terms of dimensions. It's almost OG blue. <laughs> yeah, I do like the blue color, yeah. So this one has a bottom mount type canister. So like the debris goes on the bottom rather than the top like on ours. Alright, so this is the... Prolux. It's got a similar handle too. I don't remember what other vacuum had the same similar type of latch system, but there was the in, the intervac. No, intervac was that tiny. No, one. the uh, this vac one looks very made. similar to the Bissell actually. Very similar. It's got the same type of uh, yeah. wet thing. So this one does do wet and dry. It appears. Um, we've got more attachments and such in here. It's a foam cannon, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh... I don't know what the heck that's supposed to be for. This must be, they're thinking like blowing, I guess you could attach the hose to the outlet maybe instead of the inlet and like blow stuff out instead of sucking it in. I've never seen that before. Like, yeah, it's some sort of like sprayer. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, got some sort of like turbo nozzle, another this, floor thing. The Suds Gun Sprayer Washer. Nice. But it doesn't actually tell you how to use it. <laughs> it just says that's what it well, is. Well, I kind of want to try it, you know. I'm Wait. so curious. We have to figure that one right. out. Canister's empty now. So this one is bagless. Let me throw this on there. <laughs> Definitely feels a little bit heavier than the Bissell though, which is intriguing. At least from my memory, I'm not, it could be wrong. All right. Yeah, I think we'll just hook up the hose and we should be good to go. I do like how the inlet and outlet are on the side. So if you wanted to connect this up to a hose reel or um, hide a hose or some sort of system like that, it'd be easier and look better. The hose is kind of, or the power cord's kind of annoying me in the way though. And then do we have the um, amp meter? I can throw that on there. Thanks. Alrighty, so the outlet, which... This is the inlet, I should say, rather. Ooh, that's got a fun smell to it. It is two inches, so it's got a two inch 
um, inlet. Got it. What is our accessory size? And the accessory size, I believe, is an inch and a quarter is what it looks like to me. An accessory. Yep, inch and a quarter. So that's actually so far have remained consistent for all of the ones we've tested, which is cool. Um, all right, so I guess real quick, I'll do the SPL first. So um, I'll throw the hose on there first and then uh, get SPL reading. And I, I wish I could describe how terrible this hose is. Like there's no flexibility whatsoever with it. It's really bad. All right, so sound. So I'm walking 25 feet away to get another reading. That's what we did on the other ones. Yeah, 66, 67. I will say, so I haven't really mentioned this on the other ones because I haven't, I guess, really noticed it. This one out of all of them has kind of a different shriek kind of sound to it. it like it's not as pleasant sounding. Um, so even though it's not like crazy loud, I mean, it's probably one of the louder vacuums if I remember correctly, but the sound, like the quality, the, the pitch of the noise is not that appealing. Yeah, it's right there next <laughs> to almost exactly uh, the Bissell. So gotcha. like we said, they're, they look very similar. It's probably the same motor in there, but yeah, the, the, the pitch is a little bit different. So a lot like, you know, the Krenzla and the AR and the pressure washing world, they're about as loud as each other, but the Krenzla has a better, like, tone to it, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm doing um, suction and amperage. So the amperage just open, 13.4 amps. And I'll go ahead and uh, plug this. So right at like 117 inches of water lift. And the amperage draw when I do that, 9.6 amps. And yeah, again, the sound is harsh. It's very harsh sounding. Yeah, that is not pleasant. <laughs> Alrighty, um, so now let's hook up um, our vacuum hose to it for consistency in testing. Thanks. I'm still really curious about this blow thing. I don't know how that works, but. Um, so it's a two inch outlet. So let's see here. I may need, let's see. How did we do this last time? Oh, no, I'm just talking to myself. I was wondering how I, I think I just shoved it in. I don't know if you wanted to talk about uh, I think you mentioned it previously, but not in a video uh, about the different types of motors for vacuums. Isn't there like two specific types sure, of motor, yeah. motors? Yeah. So um, there's there's um, there's flow through motors, and then there's tangential bypass. So um, a flow through motor means that the air cooling the motor, um, like the debris and, and, and all that, is, is the same. If that makes sense. So like if you could picture like rocks debris going through this hose, it's going through the motor. On a tangential bypass motor, the air that cools the motor is separate from the air that is the suction. And so those motors are more durable and they last longer. However, they're a lot louder and they don't give you as good as performance per dollar. And so for our vacuum and our use case, we found that this specific motor was, was the best for our application. But if you had like a big industrial shopper doing, you know, pretty heavy duty work, uh, a tangential bypass motor might be the one you'd want. Alrighty, so I think we're all hooked up. Let me just make sure there's no... Alright, 
so yeah, I don't feel any leaks, so I just shoved the hose in the inlet there. Mm, we forgot to do a uh, measured flow, flow with their accessories. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Um, I'll just uh, we'll continue this. with this, and then I'll yeah. put the other one back on. So um, let's see. So let's do suction and amperage. 13.3 amps. Hundred and two inches of water lift and ten point ten point eight amps. Alrighty, and then uh, gosh, I'd let this just run, but like I can't describe that. That's so annoying to listen to. Yeah, it's very <laughs> annoying, it's like, especially when it's plugged up. I mean, if you were using your crevice tool. Yeah, that would drive you freaking nuts. All right, flow is set. Let's get this centered as best as we can. All right there, looks pretty good. All right, and then I'll connect this up. All right. So we are at... 93 CFM. Yep. Yeah. I'm getting 94 now. So give it 94. Yeah. Cool. All right, and then let's switch back to the OE hose just real quick because we forgot to get the flow measurement. Do you have that? That's over there. Let me grab that. We got all of our miscellaneous adapters, and then we'll talk about all the uh, uh, accessories that it comes with, which I can already tell you they look pretty much identical to the ones that the Bissell came with. Alrighty, so we need, what was it? This adapter goes on here, this adapter, and this adapter. So this guy goes in here, this guy shoves into there, and that guy shoves into there. See, we're getting good now. Look at this. This reminds me of uh, when Matt first did uh, pressure washer testing. Yeah. Or not testing, but like <laughs> figuring out. Quick disconnect. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, adapter that Nine one. Nine inches of bolt. Uh, go down right there. Okay. Seventy-seven and a half. Um, so performance of this is all right. I think you could get work done. I guess I didn't really do the hand test. I can. It's got suction, but like that noise is brutal. Really not great. So like I wouldn't recommend this just for the sheer noise of it. It is so unpleasant. Um, I gotta try this like blow thing. I, I, I'm so curious. Yep, so it connects the, to the, yeah, to the outlet, I guess, and then uh, blows, but it's like so weak, you can't even, I don't understand the point of this. It would take you like five hours to blow your car off, but I don't know why you would want to do this. Is that a little better with the nozzle on there? Something. I just, I don't get it. I feel like they're they're trying to come up with the gimmicks just to make it more sellable, but like. I can't imagine an application where you'd be washing something and you're like, oh, let me pull out the vacuum real quick. Yeah, yep. All right, well, that is the Prolux. I think we got everything we needed there, right? So we'll clean this up real quick and then move on to the, um, let's do the car. I want to leave the Metro back for last. But the accessories. Oh yeah, we could talk about accessories. Do you want to do that while I'm kind of cleaning up? Yeah. All right, so am I talking about accessories? Yeah, yeah. While Tommy's uh, packing everything up, cleaning, we're gonna dig through some of the accessories. Uh, the criteria we're grading these accessories on is quality, meaning like how is the quality of the plastic? Is it thick? Does it feel like it's gonna last? Ergonomics, 
um, like you know, in terms of holding it, is it does it feel good? Is it usable? Uh, and then effectiveness, which is the actual like, you know, when you're vacuuming, does it work? Is it a worthwhile tool to have? We're gonna give it a quick score on here, one through ten, and then we'll average it out. Um, but we're gonna go back later on and really like spend some time with each one of these vacuums individually and uh, give it a, a more finalized score. But just for the, the video, first impressions, we'll run through everything. So you actually get a nice little rollout pack. This is like a chef's knife pack almost, <laughs> full of your tubes and whatnot. That's kind of interesting. You get this, because <laughs> this is a staple of the vacuum world. <laughs> Whatever that is. I think it's meant to be like a tiny little like crevice hole, like to get in between seats or something. I don't know, it's kind of unusual. Um, so it has plastic uh, floor attached or like tubes, right? It's not great. Um, the plastic itself is at least kind of thick. These appear to be for like blowing rather than than. Because I can't than imagine something. you would suck anything through that. <laughs> Plus it has these channels, so. Yeah. How much of that would you actually lose? I, yeah, I feel like half the accessories here are drunk, like use, not, not drunk, useless, right? Like, yeah. It's one of those like quantity over quality things. I will say the crevice tool is actually not bad. You get a brush that has a, a QR code to watch a video on it. I don't know why this uniquely has that and nothing else did. Your natural little thing for cleaning door panels. So this comes with a, I guess this is a replaceable, or you could like change it out. It's like a squeegee. I don't know how you'd necessarily do that, but um, it only articulates, or excuse me, it only swivels, doesn't articulate. So um, there's only one way it, it moves. Um, and then that guy is that for wet, it looks like. Again, similar to kind of that Bissell where it's got that little lever thing. So that's interesting, but um, yeah, in terms of quality, I'd say it's decent. Probably like a six or so, maybe. Yeah. Like the, the plastic itself feels pretty nice. Nothing phenomenal, but it's fair. Yeah. And then um, for, uh, what was it? The other one, uh, ergonomics, right, was the other one. Um, it probably, again, the hose is really bad. The handle on the end of the hose is not great. It doesn't have a swivel on the floor attachment doesn't have a telescoping tube. So I think that that's probably like a four, four or five. And then functionality, it does have the circular brush, so that's good. It has the mainstays that you'd like to see. So it has like a scrubber brush, dashboard brush, crevice tool. Again, floor tools, maybe a little bit lacking. Um, this is actually a good feature. Uh, it's similar to the one we have, the turbo nozzle, where it has some brushes that rotate in it. So. I like to see that. Yeah, I think we'll give it a five for five or six for the uh, functionality of it there we go. or effectiveness. Cool, awesome. So let's finish packing this up and then uh, move on to the next vacuum. All right, now we've got the Recar. So this one is. Um, Kind of like on a deep dive into Google, just kind of seeing what else is out there. So I don't know if this one's like super well known or anything, but when I saw it, it looked kind of intriguing. One, because it was kind of big, but um, it's also very expensive. <laughs> I don't remember how much this one was, but it was... Uh, the car was $1,300. Yeah, and that was just for the power unit. So you don't get any accessories with this. So all you get is the motor unit for $1,300. So as you can see, the size of this is you know, significantly larger than all the other ones. And this may be, by the looks of it, we'll have to see when we turn it on, maybe the first um, tidential bypass motor. Um, it looks slightly different. Most of the other ones don't look exactly that way. So I think this is a mounting bracket, so we don't need that right now. So I think it looks pretty, this one looks pretty fancy. I like the black, it's kind of cool. Just as a little frame of reference, uh, the OG vacuum starts at 925, and if you get all the hide a hose system, everything else, you're looking at 1455. So for 
$100 more or $100 less than the OG system, you can get just the vacuum unit. So this thing better be pretty phenomenal with that uh, high of a price tag. All right, so this is a bagged unit. And it does come with a muffler, it looks like. So it coming with a muffler also makes me think it's one of those louder type motors. Don't know the capacity of the bag, but it was definitely larger. I think this vacuum is made for, you know, supposed to be like central vac type, you know, yeah, whole house, whole home thing, which ours can do up to, I think it is 3,500 square feet if I remember correctly, something like that, which for a garage is perfect. But. Yep, so we've got the... Uh, some gaskets and such for the muffler. So to give it a fair shot, we'll install it with the muffler on it because that's what ours had. Let's see. How does it recommend to uh, install it? Do you have the instructions? The muffler, it's in the... Um the instructions, yeah. For that, must go like that. I don't need instructions. <laughs> we can figure it out. Yep, that's what it looks like to me. I think that's how it goes. You need the clamps or now. Um, I don't think we'll need them. As long as no air is leaking, I think we'll do it. If I notice air leak, I'll, I'll put the clamps on, but I think for now that's fine. So yeah, that's all that comes in the box. So we'll connect this up to our vacuum solution and uh, Get some numbers. <clears throat> so that appears to connect right here. So this stuff is for if you need a Y or we need to connect directly to the vacuum, which we don't need to do. Cool. So yeah, as, um, as mentioned before, um, all the, the rating uh, that the manufacturer states for each of these vacuums will be in the spreadsheet. So be sure to check those out to see what the real world, at least what we're measuring is compared to what they claim. So let's see, how do I turn this on? Interesting. We may need to power a switch to this. We may need to power a switch. Because I'm not seeing a, uh, you know, a um, no on -off switch. an on-off switch at all. Hmm. So we may need to yeah, like run an actual switch. And you just need to jump it. Give us a pause while I figure out how to jump it. <laughs> hey, Bryce. <laughs> Yeah, so I just used a paper clip and jumped uh, the on and off there. So I'm actually really curious to hear the volume difference like with muffler and no muffler. So maybe as I'm testing it, you can, um, when I'm over at 25 feet, we can measure both. So um, first impression though, it's super quiet, like really quiet. Seventy-nine dB. Seventy-nine. Yeah. Hundred and seven. <laughs> One hundred seven. So, yeah, that just shows how much a difference a muffler can make, right? Um, went from seventy plus. seventy-nine to one hundred seven. Yeah. So quite loud without the muffler. So, um, I, yeah, I, I really do think this is a tangential bypass motor. So now I'll walk back 25 feet and um, measure that. 62. Cool. So um, let's go ahead and do suction now. Also get the amperage rating. Fifth. 
15.7. So this guy, you're gonna probably need to get a 20 amp circuit. Cause it's just over 15 amps, even steady state. Yeah, 15.8. All right, so suction. One hundred and thirty-two-ish. Hundred and thirty-two. So that's really good, and it feels really powerful. This doesn't have a it does not have a relief, no. Yeah. Oh, I guess I need to test it with the. Uh... So it drops down to twelve and a half amps when it's clogged. So yeah, that that's moving or has some. Pretty good suction. It feels good too. So go ahead and connect this up to the flow meter. So this is measuring. Let's see if we can push it up just a smidge. 108 CFM. So really good performance out of this. Um, I would say that performance wise, I think it's the most powerful in terms of suction we've tested, correct? In terms of suction, yes. They have by quite a big margin, mm -hmm. but this is also a much larger unit probably designed for you know, multiple thousands of square feet, like probably five, six, maybe even 7,000 square feet, so. Yeah, so surprisingly, the suction, uh, it beat the OG vacuum uh, with, OG vacuum had 120 uh, inches of water lift sealed, and this one had 132, but the flow is actually exactly the same. So Got it's it. both 108 CFM. Gotcha. Yeah, so this is a different type of motor. As you can see, it's, it's louder. Um, it, with the muffler, it really does quiet down quite a bit, but it's, it's louder than ours, and footprint-wise, it's also a little bigger. And then, of course, the cost, it's, it's quite a bit. Like, our motor just by itself is, um, what is it, $600 or something like that? So this is, like, bucks. double the cost. So, cool. All right, so we'll put this away real quick, and the, the last one we've got to do is the Metrobac. And, again, it, with this Recar one, it didn't come with any accessories at all. So um, we, we couldn't test, Gets you know, what first, it comes with. for zero. <laughs> yeah, zero just the NA. <laughs> Alrighty. Next up is the Metrovac Vacuum Blaster. This is probably the most popular um, that we've tested so far um, in terms of like notoriety and like what people, you know, people have heard of this brand before. Um, so this vacuum um, does have dual functionality, I guess, in that it can work and function as a vacuum, but then it also has the ability to blow air for, for car drying and stuff. So this has, I think, a ton of accessories, both for vacuuming and for blowing off your car. Um, and so um, for this test, obviously, we're only gonna be focused on the vacuum portion of things. But I will say it is kind of cool, and I know some people prefer to use the, vacu uh, the, the Metro vacuum instead of like an Eagle blower for drying off a car. But um, anyway, we'll, we'll unbox this and, and test it out. I will note that this vacuum is very expensive. So it's right around $840 for this. Is that 140? 840. 840. Got a box inside of a box. Um, I think I'm okay right now. Alrighty, so here come the attachments. I'll just lay these out. <laughs> so the um, the wands are uh, plastic, which is a little bit of a bummer. At least they're super thick plastic. It says made in USA, which is cool. 
<laughs> the hose itself feels pretty dang cheap, which is a bummer, because that's like their whole thing, right? Like that's like a really cheap hose. It's not flexible at all. <clears throat> so I guess this is the hose for car drying, right? And then this is the hose for vacuuming. I don't remember how long of a hose comes with this. It looks like it's probably 35 feet. It's definitely not 50. Might be 25 feet. Make a measure. All right, so that's all the accessories, I guess. So that's the first box. It's a lot of packaging. I'm taking up like the whole shop. I'm just to unpack it, <laughs> unpackage it. And now down here is the vacuum. It's a mess down here. I will say this is the first vacuum that has a, uh, all the accessories have like a really distinct chemical smell. I don't know if you've ever bought anything from like Wish or like Timu or anything. It has that like gross, weird smell. Like everything smell, I don't know. It's just an observation. Alrighty, so here's the canister. Thank you, Bryce. <laughs> Yeah. Alrighty. We're out. After five minutes. <laughs> I need a knife. I do not have a knife. Matt's desk. I'll go, I'll go steal Matt's super fancy knife. Promise I'll clean it after. Alrighty. Got some wheels. You can roll it around. I guess you can wall mount this too. You catching this, Alex? So we know how to package this back into the box <laughs> and watch it in reverse. How did we take this thing apart? All right. Yeah, I think we're gonna have every vacuum that we tested on sale um, as an open box item once we're done, probably. So if you see something and you like it. Maybe uh, keep an eye out in the Facebook group, Instagram page, and we'll probably post it up there for you to see. It's completely free, finally. Thank goodness. So, it's definitely a unique looking vacuum. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, it's like a, a tank of a bomb, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so this has two four horsepower motors, but I guess you could turn them on independently, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, so it's got wheels if you want to do that. And then I think there's a wall mount. I don't know how it would wall mount, but I am curious to see how the bag system works. So you've got the bag, goes on the end, and then a, a filter of some sort. And then it just shoves up in there. Interesting. <laughs> The quality of the powder coating is pretty good. It's just kind of a weird form factor. <laughs> All right. Let's grab measurements of the inlet slash outlet. Yeah, so I forgot to turn it on. That would help. All right. So the inlet, measure it here. is an inch and a quarter. Don't know how the hose attaches though. It might be um, on the outside of that, which is interesting, but. Um, and then the accessories, I guess I should measure as well. So this looks like a standard inch and a half cuff. I think the accessories go internally. Yeah, they'd have to, which is different from nope. interesting. Yeah. Probably that end then. They look the same. Maybe they're slightly different. Nope. Is uh, so it bottom out? And it's got, oh, really there's really an adapter in there. Hmm. Interesting. So 
So this actually is threaded. So you'd have to undo this. Whoa. That's not one. <laughs> it's glued. Almost this is supposed to, no, it wouldn't fit on that. There you go. That's interesting that you have to adapt it down. Yeah, I wonder why they put that on there first. Uh, maybe because, um, okay, I, I think I see. Oops, now I'm getting even more confused. <laughs> see what I mean by like different sizes? Like it's all over the place. Like that fits on top of that. I wonder if this is like a hose extension, honestly. So is this not, yeah, Something this like goes in here. This goes on to there. But does this fit into here? No. No. So yeah, I, I don't know why, the, the only reason I could think that they'd supply this on the hose is for installing this, because this fits on the inside of this and presses in. So maybe if you want to use this attachment, you'd you know, yeah, have this on there and then thread that on the end of the seems hose. Seems strange. Yeah, all right. All right, so let's get the measurement. So a little bit that. less idea. Anyway, so yeah, the measurement of this, Pretty sure it's inch and a quarter. So yes, eventually you get down to an inch and a quarter accessories after all the adapters and switching them out. Okay, so now let's connect the hose up. So this goes like that. And then I'll drag the hose out. Yeah, the hose is compared to ours, not on the same level at all. It is better than the Bissell and the Prolux that we've tested. So um, yeah, dragging this out, this is a, a 35 foot hose, excuse me. So is one motor for suction and one is for blowing or do they both no, work in tandem? They both work in tandem. Interesting. Yeah. That feels good. So it's pretty quiet. I'll throw this down. 82, 82 dB. So it, it measures louder, but it's it's a pleasant sound. It's not obnoxious at all. Then from 25 feet away. Sixty-five dB. Now for suction. 20 amps, so you're gonna need a very clean, dedicated 20 amp circuit to run this. Um, let me see. Yeah, so 9.9 .9 amps on one motor and then 20 with both. So yeah, you're definitely gonna need a, a 20 amp circuit for this. All right, and then Wow. So this brake goes past our gauge. So um, 160 plus inches of water lift. That's really impressive. So this has a lot of suction power then. That's really impressive. Okay, and then. Thirteen amps when it's clogged. So in terms of suction, that blows everything out of the water. Like that's actually pretty impressive. I wonder what the case for that is. It's, it's probably because it's drawing more power. Every single other one besides their car too um, was under 15 amps. And so this is like obviously designed for a 20 amp circuit. So obviously with more current it's pulling, it's able to have more power for the motors, which obviously improves the performance quite a bit. So yeah, yeah. I would be interested to see the flow as well. So if you guys remember um, suction, and CFM are, are uh, opposite, yeah, like inversely, related. inversely related. So as one goes up, the other goes down. So, you know, although it might have a ton of suction, you know, it's interesting to see how much flow it actually has. Let's see what we can do to adapt this all together. Let's see if I can put this on this. Would you say that flow and suction, like how would you compare that to uh, pressure washing, like PSI and GPM, are they as important, can you sort of like fine tune it or is it sort of um, just what it is? It's there, it's not 
super comparable. Um, there are use cases, and you would like to design a vacuum um, specific to your use case. So if you are you know, getting dust in, in, in light um, debris, um, more, you'd want to have a vacuum that has a higher CFM or more flow. Um, if you are picking up heavier stuff or you know, just more everyday cleaning, look for something that has a higher suction. Interesting. So that doesn't fit on there. We'll get there eventually. So that doesn't fit in there either. Does that fit directly in this white piece? That's what I thought, but it didn't seem like, I thought squeeze, it was too loose. Felt like it, was, it in? Yeah, it feels too loose. Well, because it's conical, so you could sort of just... This one I can't. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Um, let's see. So if I put that in there, that doesn't fit there. So that would fit there. Does this fit into there? Not really great. Uh, this into there and that into there. Okay. Tw 20 adapters later. Yeah, this is the problem with all these <laughs> vacuum hoses and sizes and stuff is that you just have to kind of jury rig it to have any sort of, you know, crossover. There we go. That works. All right, so you can hold that. Turn it on. Uh, forgot to zero the thingy. Hold on. Alrighty, so try to center it as much as you can vertically too. There you go. That right there. A hundred and sixteen CFM. Alrighty. That's pretty impressive actually. So let's uh, connect it up to our vacuum, and, or vacuum reel, excuse me, and get the other tests. So um, yeah, performance-wise, this is by far the most powerful one we've tested. But again, that's expected because it's pulling 20 amps. It's kind of cheating. Not really, but yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so this would be something you'd have to like get a custom thing, you know, like a, a circuit installed. You probably don't have. Circuit. Yeah, you, you need a dedicated 20. Yeah. So that'd be something to consider if you were going to purchase that. So the other good news is adapting this to our vacuum hose reel is super easy because it accepts the standard cuff. And so, um, well, you just need the jumper hose and then the, the vacuum reel and you're good to go. Well, the, in terms of reaching, because of the... I may need to set this on top of the viper chair right here. Alrighty, so we're hooked up. Um, we'll turn it on. <laughs> yeah, good catch, right? It does have a little bit of a kick. Um, <laughs> if like a zip tie or something, I could like zip tie it I mean, to the I can just hold it. Sure. As long as you remember the yeah, numbers. Yeah, my goodness. All right, ready? There we go. Okay. So, amperage. Twenty point two. It does, yeah. It's definitely got some kick to it. All right. One fifty. One, yeah, it's just under 150. 15 amps. All right, and then flow is the last. Oh yeah, do the decibel meter. Yep. Did we already do that? No, we already did that. With this one? Yeah. Oh, we already did? Yeah, my bad. All right, so suction. Or flow, I should say, excuse me. <laughs> Center that best I can. 
110. Nice. There we go. Very, very impressive numbers. Yeah, it's not bad. So, um, I wouldn't, I mean, I guess if you're using this to, to blow dry a car, you might want to keep it on wheels, but like personally, I would, I would wall mount this for sure. Does it come with the, the brackets to wall mount? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it does. Gotcha. Somewhere. Okay. Maybe it doesn't. This right here. This oh, is, yep. This would be is. the wall mount bracket. Okay. So yeah, it comes with what you need to, to wall mount There's it. Some screws. And so too. yeah. Um, if you like blow drying a car in this type of way, and you also need a vacuum, this is a great option, but you do need a dedicated 20 amp circuit. So that's something to consider. Um, hose management, um, as it comes like from, from, um, from Metrovac isn't great because it's just a loose hose and you have to hook it up. So if you have one of these, I'd highly recommend you get um, a vacuum hose reel. Um, you can buy that from us, of course, if you want. Um, but yeah, that, that was actually pretty impressive. Um, we don't really have anything to compare that to because we don't have another 20 amp um, motor um, to, to, to do a direct comparison. But yeah, just looking at like, hey, this is uh, what this vacuum does is actually very impressive. Um, Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So Bryce was saying, like, what happens, um, or what is the performance of one motor? So all we have this hooked up, we should probably test it out real quick. Does it um, half the suction? Does it half the flow? Or, you know, what is the relationship between doubling the, the, the output of the, of the motor? So yeah, let's turn this back on. That's actually a really good thing to test real quick. So um, I'll turn it on and just do one, back, or one motor. Am I centered there, Nick? Yep. 77. And then the other one was what, 110 when I did both? It was 108. Yeah, 110 when I did both. Interesting. And then, um, well, let's, let's try suction. See, so yeah, it's a little over 30% loss. Does 80, 84, up to 150. So just under half for suction. Yeah, just under half for suction. So, so yeah. Um, I think it's a lot like I the egos, though, where you're probably always going to be running it. And yeah, I don't know why you would want not to have the full power. Because I mean, you would just want yeah, the most all the time. Yeah, you would just want uh, it 24/7. Maybe it's a redundancy thing, but uh, uh, I mean. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. I guess they probably figured it was better to have the option than to to not yeah. have it, right? So it's simple enough to just put both on if you need them both. Interesting. Cool. Um, we can run through the accessories real quick, um, and then that will conclude uh, this video. So as we mentioned earlier. Um, there's accessories for, for blowing your car off as well as um, you know vacuuming out your car. So it does come with two hoses. So this hose um, you could use for you know uh, blow drying your car. Comes with like a, a rubber um, rubber tapered nozzle um, for blowing. So um, we're not super interested in that right now. But it, again, just note that this vacuum does have that functionality, which is kind of nice. Um, you get your typical. Um, teeny tiny um, accessories here um, for like super small stuff. Most like vacuums, or if you look up vacuum accessory kits on Amazon or whatever, you'll find stuff like this. But it's got like little extension wands and um, you know, little uh, bristle brush attachment, um, a crevice tool that's really small. Um, so you stick that on the end of the hose to get, I don't know, in between really tight areas. Um, the accessories themselves are actually pretty good quality, I would say. Um, the, the plastic's pretty thick. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to crack or anything. Pretty standard crevice tool. Um, the brush does feel pretty cheap. It's not a natural, natural um, hair bristle brush, so I wouldn't recommend this on upholstery at all, but you could get away with it on carpets, maybe. Um, plastic, maybe. 
Um, the floor tool um, is just a basic one. Looks like your, your typical you know, floor attachment. Uh, it only swivels, there's no articulation. And then again, we mentioned earlier the I think the ones are themselves are um, almost plastic, which the is the exact great. same one that comes with the Prolux. Yep. I think it is. Yep, and yeah. appear to be. So that, that's again, that's the, that's the other thing is we've talked about a little bit. All vacuum accessories like appear to basically be the same. They either share parts um, with with other manufacturers, or you know, there's no one like innovating in this space. So I think that's eventually um, we'll be able to provide some value there and and start making some legit, real cool with actual thought put into it accessories. Um, and then lastly, the last accessory we have for vacuuming is this super thin crevice tool. And then of course the, the typical like car wash type um, nozzle there. Um, so in terms of quality, I think six, like the, the, the plastic feels pretty good. Um, ergonomics, I would say is probably not the best. The hose is better than others I've tested, but it's still compared to ours, just not even close. Um, but it doesn't have a handle at all. So if you want to do this on the floor, like there's just no great way to kind of hold it. I mean, you could just connect it in and, and do your thing with the floor attachment, but that's not great. So I'll say a five, I think for that. And then in terms of effectiveness, I think all these would do, do pretty well. Um, so probably a six. There are some tools that are missing. I think that would be nice to have, um, like a, a turbo brush. There's no turbo brush. There's no um, like wide type brush like with, with uh, bristles on it. Mm -hmm. It's just this, which, brush. which isn't as great. So yeah, I think a, a six for that is probably good. Cool. So yeah, that is um, day three of vacuum testing. Um, I think we have a couple more on the way, but um, for the time being, that's all we've purchased so far. Um, and uh, be sure to check out the spreadsheet that we have in the description that will have all the specs that the, the manufacturer says the um, vacuums can do and then obviously we'll have all the numbers from our testing today on there as well um, Thanks for watching and as Matt would say stay tuned for more crazy